Hello, this is Apicius Investor. Today I'm going to cover Rocket Lab. Um, Rocket Lab, uh, this is a company within the space industry uh, in the space sector. Um, and currently they launch rockets and also build satellites for companies. Um, so they do really super exciting things. They do have some hefty competition with SpaceX. But I do think this company has a whole lot of upside um, based off its valuation and their success rate, which we're going to go over in later in today's video. So if you like this content, please be sure to like and subscribe. Um, most of the people that watch my channel are not currently subscribed, so I think it's around 99%. And yes, that's a real number. So if you like this content, please be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, let's get to it. Um, so we focus on industries like uh, space, artificial intelligence, cannabis, psychedelics, um, spaces where there's not getting a whole lot of attention. Um, but there's huge upside, but definitely a whole lot of risk. Um, so just be aware of that when you're, you know, uh, doing your own due diligence. Um, also, why am I bullish on the space industry? It's because it's expected to reach one trillion in revenue by 2040. So currently, Rocket Lab trades about a two billion dollar market cap. Um, so you know that's really tiny when you're talking about a trillion dollar in revenue. Um, so if they're able to grab some of that market share, this company could be a multi-billion dollar company so in the hundreds of billions of dollars um, that's quite possible um, if revenue does reach 1 trillion by 2040. The uh, rocket lab is number two to SpaceX and the number of um, rockets launched in the US. Um, just a reminder that um, uh, SpaceX is actually um, worth 100 billion in the private market so most investors don't have access to this. You have to have a certain amount of net worth. Um, so if you want exposure to SpaceX, um, apparently Google owns seven percent. So you could uh, have a look at Google. Um, but I'll just let you guys know that. Um, so currently they're number two. Um, also, they had twenty-seven successful orbital launches within this small launch vehicle. Um, this is the market that they operate in, uh, and they have a few competitors who are nowhere near as successful. Uh, so you see Asha here too, uh, Virgin Orbit, Orbit 4, uh, and Rocket Lab 27. So they're really successful in this market, but not much competition. Um, they also uh, launch satellites for the U.S. Space Force, NASA, and the NRO, and also commercial clients like Black Sky and Unseen Labs. So um, they're also uh, extremely successful so their electron vehicle um, so it flown 31 times and then they had 28 successes and three failures so I think that's like a 90% success rate so overall really successful um, this compares to Falcon 9 this is SpaceX's vehicle um, they had 184 um, launches and 182 successes so that's even higher, but it kind of compares to SpaceX. Um, so that's really impressive how they're able to have 90% uh, success rate on something so difficult. So um, I'm really impressed with what Rocket Labs is doing. So my opinion, I think uh, the only real competition uh, for a company like uh, Rocket Labs is SpaceX, um, just because of their success rate. Uh, here's one of their competitors, Astra. Um, they actually only have a 20% success rate, and here's one of their vehicles going sideways uh, when it was supposed to launch. So yeah, I think uh, they don't have much competition other than uh, SpaceX, which is you know a real big competition. But uh, I did make a video on Astro. You can go check it out. I don't think they're gonna make it, but you know we'll definitely see in the future. But you know I don't think a company like Astro makes it. So just like SpaceX. Um, Rocket Lab is also diversified. So SpaceX, what they have is Starlink. Um, Starlink gives you access to the internet pretty much anywhere in remote places. Um, and Rocket Lab does uh, something a lot different. So um, 
They manufacture spacecraft, satellites, and provide systems that manage the life cycle of satellites while in orbit. Um, and this just pretty much uh, diversifies their business model and allows them to get revenue streams from different places. Um, when you're launching rockets, sometimes it could be cyclical, so it might happen more in one quarter than others. So it kind of uh, kind of skews your revenue growth. So some quarters you might have higher uh, revenue growth and some quarters it may be lower just based off of when the launch is, uh, rockets were launched. So something like space systems pretty much makes the revenue more predictable. Uh, it makes it grow a lot faster. Um, so they made a number of strategic acquisitions like Planetary Systems Corporation and Advanced Solutions to kind of speed up this process of uh, revenue growth and establishing their business. So, you know, I really appreciate uh, what they're doing uh, and how they're diversifying their business model. Um, what people don't realize is 66% of their company's revenue actually comes from space systems. So they're not just launching rockets, um, which is a big part of their business, but they're also doing space systems. So uh, uh, it's really cool that they're actually um, branching out into these different um, sides of the business and innovating. So this company has seen huge revenue growth um, over the past year. I mean, the last earnings report, this company grew 25%. Uh, their revenue grew 250% uh, year over year. So that's huge growth. Also, Rocket Lab had a backlog that grew 37% uh, over the past year to nearly $400 million. Uh, And they also got a five-year NASA contract uh, worth $300 million. Uh, and also, they were hired to build 17 satellite buses for Global Star uh, for about 143 million. So, you know, this is only a 200 billion dollar company, and you know, these are really huge contracts, or two billion dollar company. These are really huge contracts. So, you know, really nice revenue growth for this company. Um, one of the red flags that I see though is that their cost of goods is also growing tremendously. So, um, in terms of profitability, um, they have an estimate of about. 2025 so we'll definitely see if that happens um, you know if they can't get their costs down um, and their margins higher then you know that won't happen in 2025 but we'll definitely see so they have a solid cash balance of 542 million uh, they are burning a good amount of cash so they had 792 million uh, last summer uh, so that's about a 200 million dollar or 250 million dollar cash burn so, you know, but debt is definitely not a problem for them, uh, but they do have a cash burn problem. Uh, so we'll see if they definitely um, slow down that cash burn so they don't have to dilute shareholders and raise capital. So what I do think will slow down cash burn and help the company save a lot of money and prevent dilution is a reusable rocket. Um, this is something that SpaceX has done. Uh, and it saves companies a lot of money and also has higher margins. So this is something that I'm super excited about uh, seeing and how it uh, translates into the balance sheet. Um, that's something that hopefully um, slows down the cash burn. So overall, I think Rocket Lab is a really solid play if you want an exposure to the space industry. Um, just look at their success rate, so 90 plus percent. That's right along with SpaceX the clear top uh, company within this sector um, and you know you can't really buy SpaceX yet so I don't know if you wanted exposure to the space industry I think Rocket Lab is probably the number one play in my opinion um, I definitely want exposure to this um, but of course none of this is financial advice um, this is just me sharing my ideas between their diversified business model their success rate uh, and also NASA and other corporations using their technology uh, and their rockets. I just think this is a great business so for the long term. Uh, so please be sure to like and subscribe. Um, I really appreciate it. Have a nice one.